Ikke ord. Okay now. From the beginning. About that. About that. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the table tonight. It's rather empty, <laughs> and there's a big reason for that. You know. Uh, eight inches of snow this morning on the ground, and uh, it's pretty damn cold outside. So um, yes, one of our scheduled food trucks that we were going to have on tonight obviously um, is unable to be with us tonight in the studio, so we'll try and get him rescheduled for next week. Our uh, technical um, producer, Gnarly Gnome, <laughs> hopefully is listening from home, and he's pretty damn impressed that I hope. everything started and... Uh, you know, we're right there on time. It's all, 7, 7 p.m. All the p.m. on all the right things. Everything's recorded. It sounds as if everything's working correctly. So we might be getting used to this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Just <laughs> Pretty hang cool. on. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, everybody. Another uh, another uh, episode of uh, Food Trucker Magazine. Uh, my uh, trusted cohort, Food Truck Brit. What's braving, up, people? Braving the weather, hanging out with me tonight up here at the studio. Uh, it is uh, really cold outside. So. Yes, sir. But uh, the eight inches of snow did not deter us from opening the food truck. We not just don't all. have any customers, that's all. That's okay. We ate all the food. <laughs> yes, we did. Actually, we had uh, Richard's Pizza tonight. Plug out there yeah, for uh, Richard's to Pizza. Richard's, no onions. And yeah. Yep. They're right across the street from us, so uh, we always we always order food from them. And uh, the new Prime Barbecue place right here next to us, we get food from them, too. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a Tuesday night favorite. Yeah. But if you're tuning in tonight, you remember last week um, we had on Wanda Walker-Smith from the Hammonds County Small Business Development Center and uh, shared with you guys some information uh, about potential funding resources through their organization. And we just uh, kind of got cut short after uh, after our uh, little chip there in the uh, mixing board fried out on us and gave us some weird sounds. So I didn't do anything. We we went out and bought a couple of new chips this week, and so <laughs> it wasn't my fault. I swear. Hopefully they're the right kind. I don't know. Well, so far it's working. That's okay. It's good. Um, but yeah, we were uh, talking about funding and wanted to try and uh, reiterate a couple of other um, options that have been for some food trucks uh, successful. And uh, one of those is um, essentially selling um, your food prior to you launching uh, to potential friends, family, and supporters. So it's kind of a... Um, gift certificate, if you will, uh, that you issue out in advance of your opening um, to people. And you can kind of treat it almost like a bond. So you could sell somebody, for example, a $25 um, gift certificate in advance of you opening. Um, and then when they bring that uh, gift certificate to you upon your grand opening or after your grand opening, any time in, uh, you can set the time frame three months, six months, redeem this within, you know, the first year of operation, whatever. And then you can set on a uh, additional value for them purchasing that in advance. So for example, they buy a $25 gift certificate to you. Um, they redeem it three months out, 90 days out from your grand opening. It's worth $35 at the truck. If they extend that out to six months um, and don't redeem it for until six months later, you could value that at, say, $45 or even $50. So it's a great way for you to kind of raise money for your food truck launch or the expenses that go into launching your truck uh, in advance just by selling um, gift certificates. So that's one option that you could do. Another option that I have seen work on some trucks uh, is if you're going to be buying your food, say, from a local um, small business. Um, for example, let's say you partner with a, a farmer in your community and you're going to buy X amount of product from this farmer over the course of your first year. Uh, you guarantee to purchase uh so much money in supplies and food and that from that particular resource. And in exchange, um, you offer them a logo on your truck. So 
you can kind of uh, creatively put the logos obviously where they're visible on the service side of the truck, which is a selling point when you're trying to sell a logo to some sponsors. Um, you know, and you can, um, I've seen them go after Heinz ketchup. I mean, I've seen an actual truck with the propane bottle on the back wrapped like a Heinz ketchup bottle. And that was sold as a sponsorship to Heinz in that local Sounds market. That's cool, man. I yeah, like yeah. I mean, it takes the plain white propane yeah, tank and cool. dresses it up, you know, and it makes it look like a Heinz ketchup bottle. So awesome. some of you might have seen that picture floating around the internet, but that, um, you know, is a, is an option for you to uh, partner with a business, especially, let's say, for example, a wrap company. You know, you want to get your vehicle wrapped. You don't have the four grand or forty five hundred dollars, which is what the average full truck wrap costs. Uh, most wrap companies will put their logo on the back of your truck in you know a small size format, uh, indicating where you got your truck wrapped. Um, well, that's going to be on your truck for however long you own your truck, and so that is a marketing value to that business, and therefore you should get yourself a little bit of discount. Um, off of the cost of the wrap. Now, the other thing you can do is say, hey, what if I gave you a much larger space to advertise your business on my truck? And for the next two or three years, that logo stays there on my truck and indicates what you can do for other trucks. Now you're basically getting into a mobile billboard scenario um, where you can charge money for it. So you can raise funds in that manner as well. So those are a couple things. And then obviously you can, um, you know, if you've got a strong enough business plan, which we talked about last week, put together and you can share that with friends, family and um, other business associates and say, look, you know, here's my business plan. This is what I this is what I project in doing in sales numbers. Um, you know, how would you like to come in as, you know, a, a silent partner or a percentage partner? And you can make that, you know, whatever you want, three percent, five percent. You don't want to give away too much. You know, you want to maintain your majority stake in the truck. But it's another way that you could raise uh, additional funds that you might need. So, by the way, if you guys have any questions tonight, if you have any comments, you have any input, um, we are uh, going to be taking calls from 7 to 7.30. After 7.30, we've got guests on all the way up until our 9 p.m. closing hour. So uh, if you want to call in, if you've got something that you want to share, please feel free to give us a buzz here at the studio uh, the number is 513-480-2290, and you can give us a buzz up till 7.30. After 7.30, we'll have guests on the line, and uh, it'll be non-compliant. So, anyways, we did a lot of work this week uh, out in the shop so far. Yeah, um, we did. Despite the uh, inclement weather today, we... Uh, we got a lot done today. We did get a lot done today, which is kind of fun. So for those of you that aren't familiar with, um, you know, everything that we do, um, we fabricate uh, trucks and trailers. And um, yeah, put your logo up on the screen. We had a pretty good day today out in the shop getting a bunch of stuff done. So, um, yeah, we were into uh, propane today. Yes. Propane and propane accessories. Propane is... Um, Propane is a um, necessary evil, and and I think the reason being is because the more stuff that you can run on propane, the less electric you have to draw, and the less electric you have to draw, the smaller of a generator you can have. So <clears throat> I like but, that, but I, I got a counterpoint to this. I was thinking about this while I was working all right. on all this propane. I, I, got, I, got, I want somebody to call in and say, no, Tony, I run electric and I've got these generators and I've got these fryers and I've got this flat top and I got everything running electric and I love it and I'll never mess with propane. I really want to hear from somebody that's like all electric or really loves that side of things just because I look at this and I think I've seen some trucks, especially I, I won't mention their name because I don't want to call them out and get them in trouble, but they've got equipment that's electric and they don't have to have hoods. And they have windows open and, and screens and I, and they're saving themselves money and it's dangerous, but, but well, it works, it works, right? Yeah. I mean, if you have grease laden, uh, anything, um, you really should have a hood in your True. truck um, because if you don't, it's going to cause you all kinds of problems without being able to vent all that out, especially if you're running a fryer or a flat top griddle and you're doing a lot of, you know, burgers and that kind of stuff. But 
I had an all electric trailer. I know that's why I'm trying to get you to talk about it. I want to hear about it. Well, I could tell you it was a pain in the ass, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, because we were running two predator 3500s in parallel to each other. Yeah. And um everything was electric based, but what was funny is that you had to juggle what was on and what was off at oh, all times because of the power because of the power requirements, right? So you couldn't run the AC unit at the same time that you had the steam wheels on because the steam wheels are drawing, you know, anywhere from 900 to 1300 Watts of power, depending on what setting you have them on. Well, we had two of them, you know, so that right there is like yep, almost a full yep. generator just for those two. Then you've got your exhaust hood. And then when your water pump would kick on, if you didn't have your water switch turned off, oh, wow. you know, that would kick on the water heater. Okay. And then we had a microwave that so would have to be used. You have a you and know. so it was actually, we got pretty damn good at, you know, <laughs> oh, we would call, you know, heard, you know, yeah, in the but kitchen. You're, you're calling, like, not, yeah. you're not calling you're checks. Like, you're calling microwave off. off. <laughs> yeah. Microwave on, okay. microwave off. Right. You know, I, you'd I have to it. yell out. Okay. And then All somebody right. would reach over and turn the steam well off or, you know. And so we got a juggling act going on inside that unit. And it actually, once you get used to it, it's not a big deal, you know. But God forbid if you forget. <laughs> <laughs> right you know the generator down, goes out and right. all of a sudden the lights go off and you're like Shit, right yeah. somebody forgot to turn the microwave off you know, and i guess like, at least with propane you can just keep on cooking you know you're just yeah. you're still cranking food out you can't yeah so i mean there's cool. there's okay. pluses and minuses but the more i um the more i got used to you know installing and using propane i'm, right. I'm diehard propane now I can tell. I mean, that's what we've been doing and the, our customers are getting propane. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that when we fire these things up for test, I mean, they're, they're sweet. Yeah. I'd be honored to cook in one of them. So the, um, the trick to the propane and we get this is happening right now all over the country, uh, because of the cold weather, uh, people are constantly asking, how do you stop your propane from freezing up? How do you stop? You know, how come my lines so are freezing? How do I? It's basically the BTUs that your regulator can process through. So you've got to have um, enough of a regulator that can push out enough uh, BTUs and propane volume to your equipment. So, so it starts with the regulator. Correct. And if you've got too small of a regulator that's drawing off of your tanks and your equipment's trying to draw all that through, um, you're not going to have very much success, especially in cold weather. Um, with being able to feed that equipment the right amount of propane. So that makes sense. We started buying these, um, it's basically 460,000 BTU regulators. Overkill. <laughs> Definitely overkill. Um, this is like the same ones we had on the line at, yeah. uh, in the professional kitchen, yeah. that situation. Well, cool. what it does is it allows you to add additional equipment down the line if you have to. So cool. But it definitely feeds enough, and uh, it feeds enough propane into the, uh, into your truck to make sure you can run without it all freezing up and everything. So, but we got some things to share with you guys tonight. Um, getting back to um, Wanda Walker Smith um, from the Hamilton County Small Business Development Center. If you guys look at the podcast episode from last week on our YouTube channel, there is a link on there that you can click on and that will take you over to the application process that you need to fill out in order to get in front of them, get involved with a counselor and start that process of finding some of that grant money um, that is available um, right now. So you can, you know, hopefully get some of that to fund the startup expenses of getting your, your mobile unit up and running. Um, those were, as it was explained to me, um, those funds are not only available here in Ohio and in Hamilton County, but they are available in every, uh, district across the country Wow! in one way, shape or form. Wow. Now it may not be as much as we have here in Hamilton County, you know, but it could be more, but it could be more, it could be less. So it all depends, but it's there. But there is funds there that are available, especially given that most of this has come out of the multi-trillion dollar funding options that have come out of our government to help keep small business alive. And so, therefore, this money is available. And it's tax dollars, you yeah, know. Do this. So, if you don't make that call, if you don't uh, initiate that conversation, um, there is nobody else to blame except for you. So, if I live in Omaha, Nebraska, Tony, how do I find out? What do I do? 
just pull up Omaha, Nebraska, Small Business Development Center, and boom, it'll probably be right there at the top of the page. You That's the key to everything, Small Business Development, development Center. Center. If Correct. you're going to start a business, have a business plan, but they can help you. Yes, they will. They will help you build one, create one. But better yet, if uh, you are a beginner looking to understand everything that it takes to get in, last year we held a seminar at the African American Chamber of Commerce. And this year we are doing the same. And we are going to be doing it virtually, which makes it very convenient for anybody that has a computer. Uh, we'll be able to log into the Zoom uh, that is set up for this particular uh, event. So it is going to be a two day class uh, as opposed to last year where it was one day, but we are going to shorten the hours of each day. And again, you can do this uh, from the comfort of your own home. So if you want to mark these dates on your calendar, um, March 22nd and 23rd are the tentative dates um, for this seminar that we are going to host in uh, conjunction with the Urban League of Greater Cincinnati, as well as the um, Hamilton County Small Business Development Center. So some of the things that we're going to go over are going to include uh, the writing of your business plan. And we will be providing to everybody that attends pretty much a blank business plan that you just have to go and fill in the blanks. So it seems to me that everybody can find these business plans online, but then they got to go back in and they got to edit the whole thing and take out somebody else's name and take out somebody else's numbers. And it's like, why didn't I just write it myself? Well, it might be helpful. I mean, it's a template. I mean, especially when you don't know what you're doing at all. Right. And so that's going to give you everything, um, you know, from your executive summary all the way through uh, the end to projecting what your numbers and financials will be. Um, I can't reiterate this enough to everybody that's considering getting into the food truck business. Um, the Single thing I think you need to come up with before anything else is your concept menu. So you have to be able to know what it is that you plan to cook on your unit because that is going to determine pretty much everything else after that. So your logo design, um, how your truck is going to be wrapped, what you're going to name it, uh, how you're going to incorporate uh, I mean, everything really comes out of that determining what you're going to serve and sell on your food truck. So that is one of the most important things. So when you say, I want to get in the food, where do I start? Well, why don't you start in your kitchen? Start making some of the stuff that you plan to serve on your truck and hone that recipe down to a point where you can make that item with minimal effort in the fastest amount of time and still get the quality that you want people to know you buy. You really need to put it on a recipe. Yeah. It needs to be laid out. Recipe. Just like a restaurant. I, I love to cook without recipe, but you got to do a recipe. Yeah. I mean, hell, I'm Italian, dude. I just, you know, throw, throw this, throw that, you know, and I mean, it all comes out and it's like, yeah. ooh, that tastes really yeah, good. But when it comes to a business, you're right. You have to be yeah. consistent. Especially if you want to stay profitable. So you have to portion control everything that goes into that recipe and if you've ever worked in a professional restaurant and they sit you down and give you their their book you know of their recipes uh, everything that's on there is portion controlled tgi fridays was amazing at that yeah and it's 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 how you stay profitable i mean if you're if you're running on a 30 or 35 percent profit margin as a restaurant um you don't want to have your food costs any more than you know ideally uh, 28, but most restaurants probably operate somewhere in the neighborhood of 35. So <clears throat> you got to think that if you're going to have a profit margin, um, you have to have portion control. Now, you know, you take our buddies at the, uh, the wicked lobster when they give us, you know, we don't a big old, uh, please wicked lobster roll. No portion like, control there, please. Yeah, No portion control on the lobster. <laughs> Pretty please. please. <laughs> yeah. You guys can lose this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> don't Forget even it. tune in. <laughs> Forget it. So anyways, other things that we're going to cover on the um, online uh, seminar class that we're going to host in March is uh, the legal formation of your business entity. Are you going to uh, incorporate as an LLC? Are you going to do a DBA? I mean, it's going to have, we'll, we'll go over the pluses and minuses of both. 
um, legally forming uh, your business and obtaining a uh, employer identification number from the IRS. Extremely important if you want to build a track record um, with any financial institution or lender or anybody down the road that you might be able to expand your operation, especially if you want to move into a brick and mortar scenario. Uh, you're going to have to keep very astute records, if you will, of your financials. And that all starts um, by obtaining a um, employment identification number from the IRS. So um, another good idea that we're going to cover is setting up an advisory board. Now, a lot of people say, well, why do I need an advisory board? That sounds fancy. Yeah. I mean, half the people that... Um, you know, probably get in the food truck business, don't even know what an advisory board is. That's what I was getting ready. I mean, tell them. But basically an advisory board is a number of uh, people that are either personally uh, involved in your business or are mentors that you can count on to come in and give you an honest um, perspective from an outside view of what you should be doing. So <clears throat> that advisory board you know, you might ask them, say, look, I only need you guys to meet maybe once every three months, you know, and I'm going to give you an update on where I'm at. And then you guys can give me the feedback and you just need to be brutally honest with me. So you can pull in, you know, friends, family, uh, again, even local business owners that are already up and yeah, running, you know, your local thinking. coffee shop owner, your local yeah, butcher. Networking. I mean, yeah, I mean, anybody that, you know, because they're all willing to share their experience, right. you know. Uh, in a sense, especially if it's helping you get up off the ground and and get running. Um, so yeah, an advisory board is a uh, a good thing to have as part of your your business plan. So uh, choosing your name, um, setting up your brand. You know, are you going to use a certain set of colors? Do you want to have a certain look and feel? Um, your logo design, your menu design. Um, all of that stuff is things that we are going to be covering in this seminar, showing you how to get these things on the cheap. Uh, there are a number of resources out there that not everybody might be familiar with that you can get a lot of this stuff done uh, for pennies on the dollar. And so we're going to share that information with everybody uh, so you guys can, you know, start getting into that and saving a few bucks. Um, one of the other things we're going to cover on the very first day is going to be setting up all of your communication channels, including your website, um, your email, social media, and the uh, various apps that are out on the market to help support your food truck. So that's going to be pretty much day one. Uh, it'll run from 8 to noon, uh, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., and you guys uh, will be able to, again, tune in to that from the comfort of your own home. All you got to do is have some Wi-Fi and a computer. Um, so the second day, uh, again, is we're going to kick it off by uh, securing funding. Um, again, probably some of the same information we shared with you last week and uh, at the top of the hour here. Uh, purchasing your concession unit and choosing the right builder. So do you get a truck? Do you get a trailer? What size trailer? What size truck? Yeah, that's a big one. Guess what? It goes back to that menu. This, it all <laughs> revolves around your menu. Um, choosing the right POS system. You know, do you utilize Square? Do you use Clover? Do you use, uh, you know, for payouts, uh, PayPal? I mean, all that stuff we're going to cover um, under that choosing the right POS system. Uh, and then we're going to get into your permitting, your licensing, uh, and what it takes to be legally operational. Uh, insuring your business. Um, we've had uh, a previous podcast where we talked about insurance. And so we will go over that as well again with everyone. Uh, and then engaging with business groups, uh, food truck associations, your local chamber of commerces, and then uh, finally preparing uh, for your first day to launch. So those are just some of the topics that will be a part of that two-day seminar, uh, March 22nd and 23rd. And so we invite everybody to uh, either subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, uh, look us up, uh, Queen City Mobile Food Truck Association. Um, we're going to have uh, the actual event information posted here probably within the next week or so. And you guys can start signing up out there to participate. Um, <clears throat> so stay tuned for that. And then we are actually going to be doing a web design seminar 
uh, April 19th and 20th. And again, one day we're going to be covering uh, all the free web design platforms. Um, we're going to cover the low cost ones such as GoDaddy, Wix, uh, some of the other ones uh, that you can get out uh, online and uh, not have to pay a fortune for. And then we're also going to be talking day two um, about some of the more advanced platforms for those trucks that want to have an all in one integrated website for online ordering, accepting, you know, payments through your site, pre ordering, uh, all that kind of stuff. That's all. That's all a portal based scenario where um, we have somebody that um, is very fluent on doing that, which will come in and explain all that to you on the 20th. So that's April 19th and 20th. So put those dates on your calendar if you. That's um, exciting. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of of things that. And it's free. Yeah. 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 How much? Um, How much are you charging for this? Time. Wow. Time is the only thing you're going to have to pay. So cool. but anyways, I um, want to get back to a couple of the guests that we're going to have on tonight. Um, so one of the things that people are running into and I'm reading more and more about are reviews online that are not uh, positive reviews. And some of those reviews are bogus, if you will, um, and come from it could be, you know, com- competition in the local market. Oh, it horrible. could be, you know. Yeah, the non-paying for Yelp that you don't want to be a part of. Uh, there's a number of different reasons. And so we were turned on to a, um, a, a platform that we discovered uh, through a mutual friend. Um, and, and so we're going to be bringing on Ken Glenn from, uh, it's called Ranked Brain, which I thought was kind of unique. Uh, but he is the creator of Five Star Food Review. Uh, he'll be joining us here shortly. And then we will have John Kunon from uh, foodtruck.pub. So those two guests are going to be coming on here shortly with us in a bit. One of the things that I would like to uh, everybody to check out is a phone number for your food truck. So at 4.30 this morning... <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of people have my phone number, (laughs) my personal phone number. Um, 4.30 this morning, I get a phone call from Monroe. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, the shop's on fire or, you know, (laughs) know something important. Something important. So I answer the phone and it's an automated uh, voicemail about Monroe City Schools closing. So somehow I got on Monroe City Schools phone number list um, with my personal phone number. And that led me to strike up a conversation about not only the number that we have up here, which is uh, 360-7105, um, but we also have a, a couple of other phone numbers that we do business by um, that allow us to not only filter out spam callers, um, but it also allows us to uh, use that number and publish that number everywhere and anywhere without having to be inundated by potential spam callers because the services that are out there online right now will actually filter out incoming potential spam callers. And so you can pretty much pick any phone number you want with your local area code. And one platform that I would recommend everybody check out is uh, grasshopper.com. So picture this. You get a phone number that has maybe the extension or something to that effect of your, you know, your food truck concept. Um, I don't know, 1-800-TACO or something like that, that you you can actually pick, you know, a phone number that you want uh, through many of these platforms. Uh, but grasshopper.com is one that I utilize. Uh, it is uh, less than 20 bucks a month. But now I can put that phone number on everything. I put it on my business cards, on my letterhead. I put it everywhere and anywhere on my website. You know, I'm not worried about people seeing that phone number, calling that phone number. And all I do is go onto the platform and forward it to my personal number. Nice. And so for 20 bucks a month, I have a filtering service, but I also have a phone number that never changes. So if at some point this gets lost, damaged, or whatever, I'm always going to have that number, but it might be temporary down. You know, it might be right. in the shop because the screen's cracked or something. I yeah. might not have access to it. Yeah. <clears throat> the number on Grasshopper is always there. Cool. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
that number can take phone calls. 20 bucks. 20 bucks a month. That's it. Mm-hmm. Best money I think you will spend when you're setting up your business is getting a permanent phone number that you can push out and publicize everywhere and not have to worry about whether or not somebody's got your personal phone number. At 4 a.m. <laughs> at 4 a.m. Or at 3 a.m. Or, you Whatever. know. A disgruntled person yeah. who just had your, you know, tacos at 10 o'clock and at 2.30, they're pretty wasted and they're thinking, oh, that's not, you know, and then they start calling that number <laughs> yeah, that was on the go. side of your truck and you're like, oh, there man, who's calling me at 2.30 in the morning, you know? Plus, the worst thing you can ever do is not answer the phone. So, <clears throat> you know, somebody calls and it's supposed to be between your normal operational hours, uh, you might want to have it set up to where, you Some, can answer the phone. Happening, yeah. You know? Somebody's answering. So every time I leave here out of the office, I'll take the you know the grasshopper number and I'll forward it to my mobile. So if they call and I'm on the road going out and picking up whatever, you get it, it rings on my phone. Plus I see the screen message and who it is, and I can immediately. Wait, you're always ringing too. Oh yeah, you're always every ringing. Day. And and speaking of ringing, speaking of ringing, so we got uh, we got Ken with us. So uh, Ken who I mentioned just a few minutes ago is the creator and founder of five star review. So from what I gathered, um, and I have gone on to their site to check out everything that I could possibly check out and how it all works. Uh, as most of you know, um, you will from time to time get not only positive, but negative reviews. And it's how you go about handling those negative reviews that is going to, maybe potentially retain a customer uh, that you might have otherwise lost. It all depends on how you go about doing it. Um, but, you know, you can't you can't really control those, or you couldn't control those up until uh, this app kind of came along, I mean, pretty much out of the blue, because I'd never heard of it before uh, until a couple weeks back and uh, started looking into it. And I thought, man, this would be a good topic to have on the show introduce what this uh what this platform can do for you know our fellow food truckers and so good thing we could have ken on ken uh can you hear me fine uh, yes sir good deal so uh tell us a little bit about uh ken and uh ranked brain so ranked brain we do web design uh, we offer just about everything you could want as far as web platforms and online presence could be you know where those pieces are concerned, you know, all the way through, you know, the pieces that you were just mentioning, you know, with the automated online reviews, you know, so we think looking at the, the entire online landscape rather than just small pieces of it, you know, just pieces of people overlook and think, you know, well, we'll go get that over here. or We'll go get that over there. You know, we look at ourselves as a one-stop shop. Okay. So you guys are based out of Kansas city. Um, Kansas city has a pretty prolific food truck scene. I, I was just looking at the, uh, Kansas city association page and it, I mean, there's, you guys got quite a few, uh, food trucks out there. Yeah, there's probably 80 or so listed on that site. Currently, uh, we actually are working with them now to do a redesign and a redeploy of it. And so, you know, I think, uh, total, there's probably around a hundred and, 50 or so now. Awesome. That's a pretty good uh, food truck scene. So are your laws and that pretty lenient out there when it comes to permitting licensing food trucks? Yeah, you know, I think they're just like anywhere else, right? I mean, it's it, having to go to the different places to get them. I don't know about lenient. Um, personally, <laughs> myself, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not a food truck owner. Um, but we do have, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we have clients that, you know, are in the food truck industry, right. um, hence where, you know, the five-star food truck platform originated and, and how it was, uh, pretty much how it was born and, and brought to life. You know, was, we saw a need there, you know, that wasn't being met. Um, and we wanted to make sure that, you know, there was something out there that could cover it. So tell us about how it does work. So obviously, I mean, let's just give an example. Somebody puts in a review out and says they didn't like my um, loaded tachos and, you know, really try to degrade down. I mean, beyond a normal, hey, I didn't like your tachos. I mean, what does what does the platform provide to a food truck owner? So, so that would be more so on the lines of, you know, how do you respond to a negative review? You know, we, we talk about those things as well on some of our blogs, but you know, what we're offering is a way for food truck owners to solicit 
uh, online reviews from clients or customers. You know, if somebody came and bought your tacos, right? They thought they were amazing, right? And you want to make sure that, you know, they have an opportunity to post that somewhere. Right. So you send them, you know, an automated SMS message or an email asking them to, hey, I want some feedback, right? You know, let me know how the tacos were. And so we send those messages out to them and solicit those reviews from them and allow them to post them to Google or OpenTable, um, Zomato, uh, Facebook. And so there's a lot of different places we can take, you know, them to those top review sites so they can leave the reviews um, that you're looking for, right? I mean, because, you know, you know, statistically proven that, you know, Consumers are looking at either the last 30 days worth of reviews on a business when they're doing searches or depending on what age group you're looking at, you might even get into, they only think the last two weeks worth of reviews are relevant. Right. And so we want to, we want to get, you know, position the food truck industry so that you can get the, those positive reviews out there and just a nice steady stream of them that's automated. Right. And so we've got what we call integrations. So we're, you know, the food trucks are using Square or, you know, whatever point of sale system they're using or constant contact. You know, we've got pieces that we can integrate with those to pull out the customer's first name, last name, email address, and phone number and automatically send them a request for review. Um, and if we don't get one, then we send them, you know, up to two to three reminders saying, hey, um, you know, here's another opportunity to leave us a review. You know, and then we get into, you know, how do you manage the, the negative ones and, and turn that in, you know, and potentially turn it into a, a positive spin, you know, because it, people don't realize this, but, you know, but, uh, people who are doing these searches for food or whatever they're looking for, they're looking at reviews. They're reading. Them. Oh, yeah. They want to make sure that you're, they're, it, it, are you responding to your reviews? Industry average, if you're not responding to a review or a negative review within 24 hours, you know, that just goes to show consumers that uh, the customer experience is a, uh, an important factor for you. Mm -hmm. And we all know that, you know, as of right now, about 93% of consumers are looking at online reviews. Oh, yeah. So those, that's a huge number. And if you could capitalize on that, sure. right, by getting those reviews in and, you know, uh, making sure that they're as all positive, And, it, yeah, you're going to have the negative review. They're going to happen. Um, but it's all about how you handle it, right? Because, you know, it, it, it's all public, right? This is the internet. Everybody's watching, right? They want to see how you're going to react as a business and what you're going to do, right? So we've got tips and tricks. You know, I have an approach where you know, we call the wet wick approach um, and how to handle negative reviews and the consumer to turn it into a positive one. So, so we want to make sure that we have every tool possible. The, um, the automation. So let, let's just say I'm a consumer and I go up to, um, food truck Brits, uh, taco truck, and I get, uh, some of the most amazing tacos I've ever had in my life. And I tell him that at the service window, I said, dude, these were awesome. I'm coming back. I'll be back. Blah, blah, blah. How does he, how does he indicate to me or send that to me? Or is it just something that comes along with that transaction of my card being used through his POS system? How does that work? Well, so we could do it one of two ways. Uh, actually, there's three ways we could do it. One, you could manually send the request out to whoever you want to send it to through a little portal that we have. Um, so you could do a one by one, which, you know, that, that can be time consuming for a business owner. And two, to your point where you say, you know, coming through the point of sale system, you know, I come up to your truck and I, I buy your food and I walk away. And so we can set a timer to say, we want to make sure they've had enough time to eat them, right? Have the experience with the tacos and then we'll trigger the review request, you know, say after an hour, right? While it's still fresh on their mind, we want to strike while the iron's hot. That's pretty you cool. Know, get, I've had this happen. Right. It, <laughs> right. Yeah. And get, and yeah. So we can set those timers, whether it be a day or an hour or, right. or whatever it is you know, is appropriate. We set those timers and then those uh, review requests are automatically sent. Like I say, you know, using the transaction, you know, that's, the customer's information, first name, last name, that's great. email address and phone number or, or either or phone number or email. We don't have to have both. It's preferable. Right. Um, and then those are automatically sent. Like I said, if they don't respond within, you know, 24 hours or so, we'll, you know, we'll send them two or three reminders and go, Hey, you know, and you know, we're still looking for some feedback. If you'd like to leave some, um, and I said, you know, we could do the point of sale systems, you know, any CRM system, I mean, we can integrate with just about anything. That's um, awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I, I mean I we really just look like for this. specific triggers. I really, really yeah. like this. I think it's great. And, yeah, and so the industry average on these, you know, a lot of these companies right here selling these for, you know, hugely marked up prices. And, 
You know, we just look at it and go, hey, look, we want to make sure that this is enabling the food truck industry, you know, not taking away from. So the prices that we're offering these services at, you know, you're just not going to find anywhere else. And, you know, we did our research and our homework, so we made sure of that. And now you're exclusively doing this uh, for food trucks. Can you, you don't have yeah, brick and mortars under your umbrella there? Or? So this platform is exclusively for food trucks, trailers, carts, Sweet. you know, those types of businesses, right? That is all that it caters to. Um, and if you look at the content on the, the site, right, yeah. um, that is what it's all catered to. All of the blog posts that are out there are catered specifically to the food truck industry. Um, because that's what we want to deliver this offering to those are the, you know, that's, that's who we want to enable here. So I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the price. Tag. You're looking at the, the the thing everyone wants to look yeah, at. Yeah. Everybody wants to know how much, right, how much, how much, how much. Cost, right? <laughs> so 14 day free trial, obviously, uh, yeah. at this time of the season, probably not a, an ideal time to sign up for a 14 day free trial. But like most April. trucks aren't on. Yeah. But about <laughs> April or May, let's give this thing a shot for 14 days and see what it can do. But even at 50 bucks a month, I mean, that's cool. Is that like $8 a week or something yeah, like that? I mean, or it seems like. So, so if you, right. If you think about that, and we're actually offering right now your first three months at $39.99. Right. So, I mean, you know. Oh, nice. It, wait, it, wait, it, wait. It, wow. Well, how, we'll say that again one more time for our listeners. Yeah, because that's right. not listed. So, right. So the first three months, and there's a special, right? The first three months, there's an offer on our Facebook page. If you go check that out, uh, you get your first three months at thirty nine ninety nine. I like it. And that comes with free integrations, right? So these integrations that we're doing for the, the 100% hands-free automation, you know, uh, everybody else out there is, you know, charging for those, right? Or the vast majority of them. I wouldn't say everybody. Uh, the vast majority of these companies out here that offer these online reviews are charging per integration, right? I mean, I, I, we have two different reputation management platforms that we work with. Um, and I know for a fact, the other one, it's a minimum of $100 per integration. Right. So if you wanted to, to hook into Constant Contact and into Square, well, that's 200 bucks. Well, we're doing it for free. Man. Gotcha. Um, wow. And not only that, right? So we, you know, like I say, Rank Brain is the parent company. Uh, for five star food truck, you know, it, its service offerings are just it, are extremely vast. Um, we actually just did a post out on Facebook just uh, before the show started earlier uh, regarding you know having your Google My Business profile audits done right, and we'll do those for free. Um, you know, not only will we do the audit, but we also have services that manage it and uh, you know take care of everything for you. Yeah, this guy from Google. Well, he's a third party provider for Google. <laughs> calls me about 10 times a day <laughs> and there's nothing worse you know than hey dude i'm not really interested but every time my phone rings it says google on it and he has that authorization from google as a third party you know vendor <laughs> to use their credentials but it really makes google look bad when this person's kind of yeah. overzealous and trying to obtain my business and it's like nothing pisses me off more than didn't you get the message the first time <laughs> remember when i was out in the shop i had this yeah, guy yeah. i had this guy on the phone <laughs> I swear to God. And I went up to the circular saw that cuts metal and it's got to be the loudest thing in the world. <laughs> and I had the phone. I said, can I put you on speaker for just a second? And I put it on speaker and I went to go to cut the metal. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, remember, I was wondering what you were doing. Yeah. And then, and then, and then I, I stopped and then about, you know, I said, oh yeah. Uh, so what were you saying? <laughs> oh, hang on just a second. Wait, I, mean, I got to cut this piece. Too. <laughs> but he, I mean, you know, God bless his soul. He held on there for about yeah. five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I said, look, I'm really busy right now i gotta go <laughs> but that's after he tried to call me like 50 times you know i mean we all do it we all mess with people that do it so as a as a as an authorized google representative yourself through through rank brain uh you promise not to do that right oh yeah and we're a go daddy reseller as well i promise you i'm not gonna hound you um <laughs> we're, we're not gonna do that um so another interesting piece about the review platform is we give you automated reporting right so you can actually see how many requests have been sent, how many have been opened, right? How many have been responded to? So you can look at your metrics and see where maybe you need to tweak things just a little bit. Um, and all the messages that we send out are customizable, right? So we can cater them to your business and how you want them to look and what you want them to say. 
Um, there, there's nothing we can't do. So it seems nowadays that everybody's kind of migrating somewhere between, um, well, I mean, it's, it's social media posts, it's email, and it's uh, now the more popular uh, direct text messaging to phones. And so I'm looking on here, and it says 500 SMS text review requests per month, and it has an asterisk. Then down at the bottom, it says they're billed at a flat rate of $10 for 100 text messages. So is that like $10 if I send that, out 100? That's your average. Right. Yeah, it's, a, it's your average, <clears throat> basically. So 500 text review requests per month. So I can basically get included in this package 500 text messages sent out to people right. for a review. To 500 individual customers. Right. Individuals, correct. And we typically send out reminders via email uh, so that it doesn't, the reminder text, you know, don't chew up the ones that you want to be sending out for the initial request. My next that question. The next question, too. I was <laughs> like, so does that five yeah. reminders count yeah. towards my, or is it just the no, initial it one? That's so, awesome. yeah, so that's why we make sure to do it that way, right? So we don't want to chew up that number. Right. And you know, so we make sure to get the, the reminder sent out via email. And also, that sounds like the reminder text might be a little more annoying than a single text right. and then reminders on email because email is already annoying at this point. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So um, let me ask you this um, with the text message that goes out to somebody, um, obviously you've got some track record in doing this. I mean, what, what has been the say average or overall response rate? You know, I've seen anywhere from 10 to 25 percent as far as um, conversion, right? You know, now you've got your open rates, you've got your, you know, the click, you know, and did they actually leave the review? Right. But, but you know, I've, like I say, I've seen anywhere from 10 to 20, 25 percent conversion, meaning we, we actually got the review. You know, and obviously, the more you send, the more you get, right? I mean, with the percentages. Sure. Um, but those those are pretty good return rates. And you go from, you know, no reviews. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want the next review you get or the only reviews you get to be the ones that are based off of a bad experience. Right? <laughs> I see this you often. Sure, I do. I look at these right, reviews and I see sure this. Those, right, you want to make sure those reviews that are coming in is a steady, positive stream, right? right. Again, you're going to have that bad review. It's going to happen, right? You can't make everybody happy. Um, but you want to make sure that the, the positive far outweigh the negative. Right. And again, right. We've got methods to, you know, to teach you, you know, show you, and, and actually we'll give you templates on how to respond to reviews, given the situation, um, whether it's a positive response or a negative response, you know, we can show you how to do that to diffuse situations, take them offline, you know, and have a private conversation to go, Hey, you know, what do we need to do to fix this? Um, if that's possible. You know, again, because the whole online community is watching because you've got 93% of consumers that are doing searches, looking and reading these things constantly. So I'm going back through your site again, and I'm looking at the micro site. Tell a little bit about that, because a lot of food truckers, they just don't even have a website. Right. So the micro site is, is part of our offering, uh, and it's free. You know, we basically build a one to two page mini website for every food truck that gets onto our review platform. And so what that's going to consist of is, you know, you're, it's basically it, it, literally a small website for your food truck. It's going to have a listing of all of your reviews that are on every site that we're monitoring, right? And, you know, whether that's Google or Facebook um, or Zomato or everything, it pulls all of those in. And it displays them in one spot. Right. And then you get an, ag an aggregated score um, so that, you know, everybody can see. And they're not going to five or six or seven different platforms to try to find. Them, right. Right. You know, what we're, we're, we're morphing this into is, is phase two is that, you know, we want this to be the place of the platform that uh, everybody comes to to find your reviews. We want to read the future reviews here. Right. And so we're going to display everybody's reviews. Uh, in a format that, you know, when you're looking for food, it, it, here they are. Right. Right. And so instead of going into, you know, like I say, seven or eight different places, they're all going to be consolidated into one, but it's going to be the reviews that have been left everywhere. Right. But we're just pulling them into one spot. We'll display your menu. 
Um, you know, if they want to book with you, if they want to do events, you know, there's so many different things that we do. Um, up to, you know, an about the menu, um, pictures of your food, your truck, you know, there's a lot of things that we do on these microsites and they're, they're, they're packed with SEO, right? And meaning what I mean by that is, you know, all the keywords that you want to rank for and the content. I mean, we've actually seen our, these review microsites actually outrank um, and, and show up higher in search results, you know, over the main food truck website or main websites that we use for, you know, the businesses themselves. Right. And so that in, its, so that in itself, you know, when you do a search, you know, if you see, uh, you know, five-star food truck or something else come up and it's got that's the food truck's name on it, you know, that's a microsite. Um, and so that's what we're doing. You know, we're pushing that and we want to make sure to get these food trucks up to the highest as we can as a search ranking. So, you know, that's why we do the micro sites and, you know, they're individually customized for every food truck. You know, we make small little tweaks or alterations if we need to, uh, but everybody gets one and they're, they come at no cost as a part of the package. So if I'm, a if I'm, if I'm trying to go out and buy the software that I need to put or integrate into my, say my own site, or, I mean, this is probably an enterprise level widget that you're providing as opposed to a, you know, ad supported free review software piece you can download from the internet. Um, Tell us a little bit about the integration of the widgets that you have that would be available to be put on the site. So the, the same way we display the reviews on the micro sites, you can display the reviews on your uh, food truck website. So we actually will generate the code per se and hand that over to you. Right. Um, we'll install it for you. Uh, if you, if you need somebody to do it for you, we'll take care of that piece. Um, and then you can have all your reviews displayed, you know, in a stack format and a side by side. I mean, there's different formats that we can display it in, right. but the, you know, same, same purpose, right? It consolidates your reviews from Facebook or Google or some, you know, open table, wherever they're at, it pulls them all back into your website. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'm going to have to, uh, give you a call tomorrow about getting that little widget set up where <laughs> yeah, I just cool. might have to go ahead and. Right. And another thing that we do with the microsite that's actually pretty cool is everybody wants answers now, right? I mean, and so the faster you can answer a consumer's question, the more likely you are to convert them. Right. Right. So we actually integrate by default, we integrate the food trucks Facebook Messenger into the microsites. Right. So you've got an instant chat session right there that's available if somebody starts to ping you uh, and wants a has a question or needs an answer. Um, you know, and we also encourage businesses and food trucks, you know, to make sure that you've got, you know, your Google My Business app downloaded to your phone so that, you know, when someone comes along or, and that they got an event that they're, they're looking for somebody to cater, right. you know, they can get quotes from you online right there instantly and not have to wait. So uh, one of our listeners uh, posted a question on our live stream and want to know, I think you already answered this. I think but, he kind of answered it, but yeah. So somebody leaves a review, is that going to just post to what you elect to turn on? For example, um, I don't know, say you only platform you use is Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatnot. Where do, where do those reviews get posted? So we're going to give the consumer up to three choices to pick from, Cool, you know, so we've got a, so we've got a good, you know, um, variation of reviews out there across a couple of different platforms. Um, you know, a lot of uh, consumers now, you know, l let's just be honest here, you know, Google is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Yeah. Um, right. And so a lot of times, you know, what uh, clients are asking for is, you know, I want Google to be my primary. Right. And Facebook, my secondary and, you know, maybe something else to be my, my third. Right. Or I want all of my reviews to go to a specific site. Right. And so what it'll do is based off those, you know, those elections, you know, we'll say you can have up to three sites that they can pick from. Okay. Right. And then the consumer picks, I want to leave it on Google or Facebook or wherever. And then, and like, then you get notified. Yeah. I mean, is there a premium um, version where I could, Add more. more. Yeah, I'm, I'm instantly thinking how much for more. Yeah, I mean, what if I wanted to add like I want all? Yeah, the, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Facebook, uh, yeah. Yelp. Uh, I want to know. know. Zama, I mean, what if I wanted to add, say, my reviews to 10 different platforms? 
Well, so, I mean, there's, there's always, you know, there's always things that we can do as far as that piece is concerned. But right now we, we limit it to three. Okay. And, right. I was just wondering you know, if there was like a premium but, version. But, yeah. So, I mean, we can always, you know, we can tailor those and change those, right? I mean, we can have a couple different versions or, I mean, we can look at, you know, expanding that beyond three. I mean, it's, it's not a, a charge more, app. Ken, charge yeah. more. Ken, up. <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah, that's right the goal there. of this, right? The goal of this is to enable and, and, and not, you know, not, not break the, the food truck, right? Not yeah. nickel and dime the food truck to death, right? That's what we're here to do. I, I got mean, you. I got you. Not do that. that. I got right. you. We do the same thing, so yeah. We, I mean, we we're those, with so. you on that on that front, but I'm like, well, I mean, if I had to, you know, yeah. for I don't know, an but extra twenty great. bucks a month, three's you know? great. I mean, Google for sure, right? And yeah, you know, so Facebook. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the I'll give you the link to my QuickBooks account, um, and we'll we'll take care of that for you. you. We'll put as many as you want. Yeah, on. Whatever you want, man. Okay, set you up. <laughs> set you up. <laughs> Like I said, if you, we'll make it stand on its head and do pirouettes if you want to. There you go. <laughs> so what made you start this? Uh, like I say, you know, uh, we've actually been in the reputation management space for about two years now. Um, and we're always looking for uh, needs that aren't being met, right? And, you know, we do a lot of work with not-for-profits. You know, I mean, we look for wherever we can help. Right. And we saw a need here. Like I said, we have, you know, some uh, clients, you know, that own food trucks. And, and like I said, we work with the Kansas City organization as well. And so we saw a need here that wasn't being met. Or, or you know, if they're trying to meet it, you know, they're charging, you know, exorbitant prices, which we just didn't think were reasonable, you know, for what was being delivered. So right. we put a solution together that, you know, we feel very comfortable that nobody can beat. Um you know, because their the margins, you know, are nowhere near the average margin on a review platform is around three hundred percent. Wow, that's the average margin. So ours, I, I assure you, is nowhere near that, right? I mean, by the time you add in the integrations and the review microsites, you know, we're in the hole for you know for months on those pieces. But I mean, it's to us, it's you know more so like I say, the enabling piece and making sure that the food truck industry because. You know, it's, there's been a lot of challenges there. And, and when we sat back and we watched the whole food truck industry pivot with, you know, COVID and, you know, be extremely successful with that pivot and, you know, pivot losing the major pivot. events, right? And going to the more of the, you know, the, the local homeowners associations and the businesses and the apartment complexes and really taking advantage of that new location management piece and getting on back on their feet and, you know, getting ahead or at least finishing where they were the previous year, as far as their, um, their revenue was concerned. And we just thought that was amazing. Uh, so, you know, it was like, you know, going into 2021, we want to make sure that we do something to make sure that that momentum continues to move. That's cool. Yeah. Right? Well, my friend, we got the word out for you. I think a little bit on this. I think I'm definitely going to uh, sign up and utilize this. Um, not maybe so much for um, my food truck concepts, because I've got a couple of them that I operate and run. Um, but I think we might try and, I mean, I, I can use this for, like, for example, the association page, or I could use this for. Oh, yes, absolutely. I can use this in, in other forms for, for example, you know, our fabrication division, um, you know, street food ventures. I'd love to have a, you know, I'd love to have a review thing on there where our customers can, you know, give us reviews and give us feedback. So other people looking for fabrication can say, Oh, look, you know, these are all the people talking about. Yeah, man. Just set the timer when the, after they pay you and, uh, <laughs> and they're out the door. <laughs> And give them, you know, right? Where can they get a couple of miles down the road? A couple of miles down the road. How was your experience? A couple, a couple of gigs under their belt, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, hell, this yeah. works great." After the first one, <laughs> no, second one, second one. No, that's great. That's that's really. But cool. yeah, I mean, people could use this on other platforms. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, food truck related because it's just a review widget, right? Well, well it is, um, but we actually have, you know, this is, uh, like I say, this caters to you know food trucks and the food truck industry. Um, you know, but we have other ways and, and other platforms that we can use for things outside of that, if you're interested. But again, it, it, at the end of the day, um, yeah, you know, your statement is correct. Okay. Awesome. Well, we've got another guest that's coming on here at eight o'clock and I wanted to thank you for taking the time. I, I know, uh, 
you know, we had talked a little bit earlier in the day, and you guys are um, into some really cool stuff on the uh, ranked brain side. So you and I will be back in touch again on that. And then, um, you know, we'll try and post this up as a link on our website um, for the uh, Queen City Mobile Food Truck Association. For sure. Uh, definitely we'll put this and add this to our uh, allied partner page and and our resources page and uh, hopefully this will you know help some of our fellow food truck members um, control their their online reviews yeah, that's a great resource so thanks ken we really appreciate perfect. it perfect thank you guys for your time i appreciate it all right, but we'll talk to you soon. So if you guys are out there listening, uh, it's pretty easy to go check out. It is uh, fivestarfoodtruck.com. Uh, again, it is uh, the word five, all spelled out, uh, fivestarfoodtruck.com. And you can see right there on their page uh, how it works. And if you actually click on that, there's all the sub tabs. So there's integrations, uh, negative feedback. Uh, the reporting automation, reputation management, review generation, review microsite, which is cool for some of you guys out there that don't have a uh, website set up or you're using some kind of uh, off-branded site that doesn't really give you control of what your brand and image looks like. Uh, that microsite's a pretty cool option to have. Um, there's also reputation monitoring, uh, responses, social sharing. And then the review widgets. So all that, if you click on each one of those sub tabs, gives you uh, more information about that particular category. So get on there and check it out. If it's going to work for you, great. You know, if it's not, um, you know, no, no harm, no foul. But I mean, for fifty bucks a month, um, that's a lot of power that you could have over your online reviews. So. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So anyways, um, we are going to be bringing on our next guest here shortly. Um, he's on with us. No, he's on. Sweet. See, I didn't even hear, I didn't hey, hear the phone ring, man. <laughs> What's up, John? Hey, John. How you doing, bud? Good. Yeah, this is John from Food Truck Pub. How are you all tonight? We are doing great. So, um, sorry, I missed the, uh, I missed the, the phone ringing because, uh, I was busy japping my jaws. So. No, it's just that I'm, I'm on it. I'm, my this. cohort food truck Brits on him, man. He's like, Oh, there's the phone. Boom. Boom. There you go. See, but yeah, I signed up last night, um, you know, with uh food truck pub and, um, you guys are doing some pretty cool stuff with, uh, the technology you guys have on this platform, uh, especially with, um, everything that I've been seeing is like future pre-orders and the order tracking and, uh, test ordering. I mean, all, all this stuff is really cool technology. And so I wanted to get you guys to come on, talk a little bit about the platform and really explain what you're doing. Um, you know, with everything and all the different, uh, I mean, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface on the platform yet, to be quite honest with you. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh man, we got, got a lot there now. Yeah, yeah, you do. So let's yeah, talk a little bit about and grew and grew. So food truck dot pub, obviously uh food truck dot com probably would have cost around forty grand or so to buy that domain if it was available at the time. <laughs> actually, you were right on target. Uh but but you know what? We actually have food truck pub dot com um actually now. Um, but yeah, that you're exactly right. The dot coms were so expensive and this was, uh, this was a new venture, you know, that I started, um, about two and a half years ago and, uh, food truck dot pub was available, um, as a domain on GoDaddy and, uh, you know, it only set me back maybe a hundred bucks or something like that. Not bad. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, you know what, uh, you know, we've kind of grown, uh, quite a bit here, um, in 2020, and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to buy another domain for food truck uh, because I think a lot of people probably hear food truck pub. So just out off the bat, they're probably trying to get to food truck pub dot com. Right. But it's actually food truck dot pub. Uh, but either one will take you there now. So that's the cool part. So let's get into this app. I mean, you guys have everything from online ordering to pre-ordering to processing of the orders to uh, I mean, just. <laughs> I, I don't know this i mean i our friends we talked about you know brandon and uh dustin from foodies and the foodies app and how yep. that's kind of an all integrated uh solution and um you guys are kind of providing some back-end stuff on that relationship there with foodies and so not taking anything away from those guys at all but yours is really kind of geared towards online ordering is that right 
Yeah, th- that's exactly right. Um, so <laughs> interesting story. I was um, I was actually sitting at a, at a microbrewery. We're just north of Pittsburgh. Um, I don't think we're uh, too far away from you, Anthony. No. But um, yeah, so, so we're just north of Pittsburgh. Go but, you know, there, There's a brew. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 you can't say that. <laughs> of course, I, you know, I don't know my audience. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm a Steelers fan. Um, but uh, womp, womp, yeah, so, womp, so there's this little town, yeah, co- called Grove City, Pennsylvania, right. and uh, they got a really cool brewery. It's called Kohler Brewing, and, and it's actually uh, they, they they got the name and they bought the old recipes from Kohler Brewing Company. There was a big brewing company um, up in Erie, Pennsylvania. So they actually um, they started this microbrewery in Grove City. But me and my cousin would go there every uh, Thursday night. We would actually take a, uh, a YMCA P90X live class because one of our buddies, he's a college professor, he taught the class, and uh, he, we would go up, attend his class. Afterwards, we'd hit up this microbrewery. Of course, you know, we, we wanted to eat and drink away all the, all the calories we just used up at, at the class. Um, so we'd walk in there, and of course, there's a line for a food truck every week. And we were always super thirsty, super hungry, uh, but we couldn't sit down and enjoy a beer, right? We had to wait in line at the food truck. And then, of course, we had to wait for them to cook the food. And then people would always have to keep running up to the food truck, congregating around the, you know, the window to say, hey, is the order for John ready yet? Um, and we just hated that. So we were like, man. We're doing something cool? about it, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if we could just sit there at our bar stools order from our phones, have the order go directly into the food truck's POS system. The food truck gets the order alerts. They've already got their money by the time they see their order alerts. It's in their Square account or their Clover account or their PayPal account. Uh, Those are the three uh, big ones that we integrate with. Um, And they see all these order alerts. they got their order tracking screen in Food Truck Pub. Obviously, it shows as an order in their POS system as long as they have one of the web-based you know, square or clover devices. Right. Um, and then they cook the food, they put it in the window, and then you get a text message. Our app will send uh, the customer a text message too when it's ready for pickup in the window. So, of course, 2020 was huge because everyone's trying to go contactless, and uh, it was just dumb luck, you know, that we had that functionality. Um, and uh, we kind of took off. But yeah, we got all kinds of bells and whistles. But that was kind of the, um, the main use case I was trying to handle. The, of course, the other use cases are, are the, the ones you would most likely think of. Uh, you're in the city, maybe you work in a skyscraper or something, be able to see our live food truck map. Because Food Truck Pub, that's what you get. You get a direct ordering link, you get a unique food truck number, and when you're active, actively taking orders in the system, you're on our at- interactive food truck map. So, you know, maybe you work in an office downtown uh city somewhere and you can see all of the nearby food trucks active around you um you can pick one maybe it's a block away you select them view their menu okay that's cool maybe check out another truck but yeah you can place your order you can be down the elevator and at the truck just in time for your food to be ready and then get a text message when it's actually ready for pickup in the window so you don't have to waste your whole lunch hour that's cool walking searching for the food truck you're looking for waiting for them to cook your food, taking payment over the counter, and then waiting for them to cook your food, waiting for them to call your name. It's just, it's simple. And the food trucks love it too, because they don't have to have um, pay employees to just man the window. They can focus on making money. Right. They can focus on cooking the food, putting that food in the window and on to the next order. So um, it's kind of a win-win for everybody. It's, it's free for food trucks to use um, completely free for trucks. There's, there's no fees, but, we do charge a small convenience fee to the customer. That, that's how we make our money and how we pay our bills. Uh, we charge a dollar convenience fee if you use Square, and uh, the trucks don't pay it. What happens if you know if you have a ten dollar burger, you get your full ten dollars. Being the truck owner, the customer actually gets charged eleven dollars. That full eleven dollars actually goes into your Square account, and then the one dollar is transferred automatically over to our Square account. So the food truck owner gets a hundred percent of what they asked for. And, uh, we, we take the small convenience fee off the customer. And this is through but, uh, square. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. And square, Clover, yeah. PayPal. Does it matter which one I use? No. And wow. it's great with yep. all of them. So when you're setting up, I was going through the setting up of the process of, of, first of all, I got to say that <clears throat> I am thoroughly impressed 
with your responsiveness to the registration uh, confirmation. So last night, but no, I did this Sunday. Sunday, we went to go watch the Super Bowl, and I had just gotten off confirming, uh, bringing him on the program today. And I said, well, you know, I'm sitting here. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. We got there early because we wanted to get a seat. And, uh, you know, I downloaded the app, and I started to fill it out on my phone and putting the stuff in, right? And then I hear my little ding on my email go off. And this was, I don't know, 15 minutes later. And there's this nice email. I'm going to go back and <laughs> look at this email because I was like, well, that's pretty cool because it's a personal welcome from you. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if you if that's automated on your end or, or what, but it's very detailed on exactly what you need to do to set it up, which I thought was impressive. I'm like, well, there you go. There's a step-by-step -step scenario on what I need to do to go in here and Save set this up. a bunch of phone calls. Well, yeah, I mean, as opposed to like, you know, going through the site and trying to click on all these tabs and buttons and drop downs and everything and trying to figure out the whole process. It was like, here comes an email to me as soon as I signed up and confirmed my email. And it's just laid it out for me. Really nice. And then there's a personal signature at the end nice. from him with his number, you know, to, to contact yep. him at. And I'm like, you know what? There are many people that put themselves out like that, you know, and that one I can truly appreciate because I do that all the time myself. And it's like, you know, to see somebody else doing that, uh, making themselves available to anybody that has questions about it. Um, I truly appreciate that. So thank you for doing that. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, thanks. That, that's actually um, uh, fantastic feedback, too. Um, so what you did get w was an automated email, but it did come from my personal account. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I know exactly. We, we actually send a couple follow up emails after somebody signs up just to kind of sometimes people, you know, sign up um, and then they forget about it. You know, people are busy. Right. Um, so we try to send a couple emails just right afterwards to kind of get the, the concept uh, like in, in your head as far as what food truck pub is, how it works. And then, of course, the quick steps to get up and running. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that was my personal information. That was my phone number um, because I, I actually really enjoy talking with food truck owners, uh, believe it or not. Um, we, everybody kind of runs it, <laughs> Everybody kind of runs a little bit of a different business. And I, I actually find out some really cool things. You know, I don't own a food truck myself right now. But I could see me getting one. Um, I, re I really could. I, Don't do it. Build software, I, I, dude. Build software. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a barbecue. Yeah, food do truck, it for fun. Maybe okay. a taco food truck. There you go. It'd be the stuff that I love to eat. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, but but thank you for that, Anthony. That, that was actually really awesome. Feedback. So here, and, uh, this is this is really funny because I'm I'm going down through the email right now and I'm reading it. And so what I thought was really cool was at the bottom it says you can also book a call with me here, schedule a getting started yeah. call, and then thanks John and his phone number. Yep. Then in the fine print down below, <laughs> due to a high call volume, please make an honest <laughs> effort to try. Hey, check out doing this on your own before you burn up my phone, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, like you know what? Yeah, they, that, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we you know, we try to make a um, a pretty self intuitive package, but ultimately based on uh, okay, well, it's I mean, no you can, secret that some people are more tech savvy than others, right? right? right that, yeah. That's no secret. Yeah, I mean, right there's so the download. Some people, getting started, guy, right there's the top. You know, Tony, that doesn't download. matter. People yeah. don't see that. No, they don't. They just yeah, don't phone he could put it, like, it, streamers on it, and it does like kick flips on the screen. And <laughs> they're still calling him. Hey, how do little I, blue guys. How do I download it? <laughs> download me. Yeah, download how do, me. Yeah, how do I download it? <laughs> and I'm sure John. I'm sure you're nice. I'm sure you're like, oh, no problem. Just go ahead and go right there and yeah. download. That's super nice. Well, you me. know what? That 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 user's guide started off uh, <laughs> as probably a five page guide at one point. I, we, because of all the bells and whistles that we put into it over the last um, even year, because over the last year we really put in uh, a bunch of extra stuff because w we talk to people on the phone, we talk to food truck owners and we take their feedback and we put enhancements in the system based on their feedback. We really right. do. Every month we, we usually put at least a couple new enhancements and some are substantial. Like, um, what did we do just recently? Oh man, uh, it, we have inventory tracking in the system. Um, that was a Ooh. big one. Um, loyalty rewards. We loyalty. just launched loyalty rewards about three weeks ago. Yeah, two three weeks ago. But uh, 
yeah, so that, that user's guide is probably 30 pages long. So I don't blame some people if they have a very specific question and if they can't find it right away. Some people um, just are looking for a very specific thing, and that's why they reach out, too. They have a specific business need, you know? Yeah. So the menu setup, it can pull your existing menu from sync, uh, aim with Clover, and syncing with Square. This seriously has inventory built in? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep, we got inventory. Yep. Yeah, we, we have uh, we have order throttling built in. We have inventory tracking. Um, you can create multiple menus wow. um, for each future pre-order. Like maybe you're cooking for this Saturday and you're offering a limited menu because maybe it's a holiday or something. Yeah. So you can load an inventory. Um, you can put an inventory menu in that would be like a holiday menu and link it to that future pre-order that you've created in the system for Saturday. And then as a food truck owner, you can actually start taking pre-orders right now uh, get paid right now for the meal that you're putting together there for Saturday. And it's pulling out of my inventory in, in real time initially. And then I can kind of judge from there, I guess what I need. Or... Yeah. You, you basically, yeah, you set it up the first time, you know, mm -hmm. your menu with your default counts in there, right. according to, to what you actually have. Yeah. And then as people order, it decrements those counts. That's cool. And then if, let's say, you, you know, you're taking walk-up orders too, for example. So you can always go in and adjust those because Food Truck Pub only knows about the inventory, the inventory for the online. food order through Food Truck Pub. Yeah. But you can adjust those counts, you know, as needed. You, you can get all kinds of order alerts in our system. People love getting the text message every time a food order gets placed with them. And actually the full order details um, come in the text message. So they could actually cook from their phone if they wanted to, just from the text messages. Um, they also get copied. You just turn my, the email wait, you, you literally just turned my phone into a kitchen video system with online. Yeah. Ordering. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The, cool. the text messages roll in. You can see who ordered it for what for the time. Food cart guys. Um, I think a food cart and, uh, some of the smaller end guys would definitely go for that. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, my mind's going crazy right now thinking about all the different ways that that can be used. Yeah. I'm just like, holy crap. I mean, you know, you don't have to have, you wouldn't even need a printer. That's what I'm saying. Man. On your truck if you didn't have the. Just need to make sure your phone's charged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's cool. We actually, um, we integrate with, um, with Square, obviously, but yeah. I don't know if any of you guys have ever used Bump KDS. Kitchen I, display I actually, system. I used to sell it. <laughs> yes, I know it well. You used to sell it? Yeah, logic controls. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. So we actually did some enhancements into our system so that we're passing the actual like food items into Square so that they properly show wow. in Bump KDS. That's so cool. that people could go fully, you know, fully digital if they wanted to and not print out receipts. Because when people cool. place the order in Food Truck Pub, they're already getting an email invoice sent right. to them. <clears throat> so they don't need necessarily a receipt at the window, right? That's nice if you want to provide one to them, but they've already got one, and the food truck owner gets BCC'd yeah. on that same email to the customer. So it's another way that you can cook is is by looking at your orders that come in through email too. But. Do you find that uh, a lot of food truckers are, um, I'm going to say, not – technologically savvy to the point that they can utilize the majority of the apps that are out on the market. Um, I mean, I just, I have a hard time getting them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be quite you know honest what? with it's, you. <laughs> it's all over the map. Um, I, I would say it's all over the map. Uh, I'm actually surprised um, at how, see, I, I almost feel just the opposite. I'm actually a little bit surprised and how well um, a lot of them are pretty versed in technology because I would say 95% of the trucks, and we have over 3,500 trucks right. using Food Truck wow. Pub now. And we also have the whole Kona Ice franchise on right. a separate instance of Food Truck Pub, curbsidekona.com, right. which we white labeled for them. But I'm actually surprised. I would say 95% of the food trucks that sign up just they, they, they log in, they get it, they understand it, they set it all up without even talking to us, and all of a sudden the next day we see that's they're beautiful. taking online orders through that, the system. That's super cool. But I've also talked to people before where I'm like, you know what, man, maybe this just isn't for you because, you know, <laughs> you know, some people, you know, they're like my mom, right? There is no way in hell I could tell my mom how to use Food Truck Pub. It, it just would not work. Right. Um, 
she would have to take a four-year college degree. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can't have get to take a four-year my, college program. I can't get mine off a damn property. flip phone yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get the same, same right. issue. Well, I mean, at last yeah. count, you know, according to the uh, U.S. Small Business Administration, there's over, uh, I think, nationwide 52,000, if I'm not mistaken, uh, registered food truck owners, operators in the United States. And um, that includes carts. So, you know, you got your hot dog cart vendor, you got your coffee guys, you've got your, you know, those are all registered uh per se food trucks, if you want to call them food trucks, but I think they classify them all into one big lump sum number, but you know, there is a tremendous amount of growth. I think for these apps that are coming online, such as yours that have all this kind of technology, if we can just get the majority of people trained on how to use it, you know, if we could do that, um, the conversion I think would be substantial. So on that end of it, um, you know, is there a YouTube channel that guides people through like step by step on this platform, or what do you guys do to, you know, I mean, show people how it works? Well, <clears throat> I guess um, you, you know, we try to make the software as is uh, self intuitive as possible, so that when you log in, you, you know, just by viewing like the the top navigation menu at the top, right? You have yeah. your order tracking screen your menu setup settings, and then test ordering. Um, those are like the main navigation links. And um, definitely like to so we try ordering. to make it as intuitive as possible, but, but then we have an ordering checklist built in to the system too. So I don't know if you've seen it yet, Anthony, but right on the order tracking screen, which is actually the home screen when you log in, because that's where people kind of sit and, and they're watching their orders and that's where they can swipe to notify the customer that their order is ready. That's where they can swipe the other way to mark the order completed. Mm-hmm. Um, but right on that order tracking screen at the very, very top, you'll see a link for the ordering checklist. And that's kind of like a step-by-step walkthrough too of all the things that um, it's just like a quick one page at, at a glance. What are, what am all my settings look like? Am I configured properly to be able to start taking online orders? Right. So we have that. And then, of course, we have the follow-up emails that you already mentioned and referenced. Uh, we do have the user's guide. And then, of course, they can reach out and email us, too. You know, from our help and support page, they can submit a ticket to us. Um, we're fairly responsive. Um, you know, we get back to people right away. So um, YouTube channel is a great idea. Um, Two years yeah, ago, you guys started that. this in yeah. a brewery on a napkin. <clears throat> Did you ever yep. think it was going to get to this point? You know, uh, no, I, I really didn't. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, you, you know, we we really benefited from 2020, right? We're we're very fortunate uh, because you know, perfect storm. We, I would say we had a yeah, we, we had around 400, 500 trucks using the platform before 2020. Um, I, I told you we have like 3,500. You now. went up 3,000, over 3,000 users? Almost 3,000 this one. year. And, and those people were like, you know what? We have to take online orders. Wow. We, we have to. It's uh-huh. the only way we're going to survive this year. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, if you're a truck that parks somewhere and you get nonstop people walking up yeah. all day long, right? You're probably not going to take online orders. But if you if you frequently park your truck, outside of a business area or a place like a microbrewery and you have a spot where you always park your truck and uh, the foot traffic is good, but there's always room for, for more orders. Then it's like, all right, food truck pub, be able to take online orders, hang some flyers up around the buildings, the community, just advertising, Hey, go to food truck pub and place your order with my truck. Um, we, we just launched the Vista print store. Um, as well that has some some customizable materials that actually have instructions for customers on how you can order with you know bills barbecue food truck uh, or whatever it is um, so yeah we, we got some cool stuff going on so okay like so <clears throat> I think we shared a little bit of information about a you know concept um, of delivery um, and I think you guys need to build that into your app. <laughs> <laughs> delivery yeah have you um well have we, you we actually have delivery that? we just 
Yeah, so so we have delivery in our app, but it's up to the food truck owner to get the food delivered. Um, we don't integrate with Uber Eats or anything like that. I, I just I feel like those services just rate people. Oh yeah, they do. Um, That's why uh, we're we want somebody out there to build a software similar to being just, able to track Uber. We're just going to need to do it ourselves. I think we? we're just going to have to recruit you guys to build us an app. <laughs> So we, all we were asking for is, look, we'll pay a delivery driver, you know, 12 bucks an hour. They get their tips in addition to that, which is going to average out to about 25 bucks an hour. We don't want to pay 30 percent on, you know, our food orders. Uh, we might give you a, a small you know, cut or a processing fee or whatever. Um, but we want our customers to be able to order, um, you know, so that we can deliver to them three to five mile radius around our food truck, period. But we mm-hmm. want, and they customers. need to know that we're open and ready for delivery. Right, right. here's now. your order, here's just your like Domino's app, you yeah. know, where yeah. you follow the order through its process. Yeah. Um, you know, my order's been placed, it's been received, it's being made, it's in the you know delivery driver's hands, and it's in route to your house. That, yeah, integrated into your app would be badass. <laughs> 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 that's that's not a bad idea. So, so we we do have delivery in our app. You can configure whether or not you allow pickup and or delivery. You can add an extra fee even for delivery. You can specify a radius for delivery. Um, so you can do those things. Can I enable like a push is, notification that lets them know uh, yeah. that I'm available for delivery? Um. Well, not a push notification, but um, they could see you on our on our food truck app. Okay. So where's that? Um, and then, of here. course, order tracking. Would that be under order tracking? Uh, log out. Because you're still logged in as a food truck owner. Log out. And then uh, click on the, the order button um, on the on the very home screen of, of foodtruck.pub. Okay. Done. View map. And then, yeah. So I don't know, you know, where you're at right now. If there's many food trucks actively serving, you might need to expand your radius. Yeah. Um, you know, just select a drop down, maybe select 500 miles or something. Right. Uh, yeah, say 30 Ohana at night is the closest one to us right now. Well, there's eight inches of snow on the entire East Coast. I don't know. They're just yeah, they, should, trucks out they should still be. Yeah, open. if you're in the north right now, obviously a lot of food trucks do shut down for winter. Some of them are right. starting to think about opening back up, though. All right. All right. So um, if I ordered something from Ohana Donuts, an ice cream truck. Um, yeah. How, I mean, tell me how it works. So if you just click on that truck um, and click the order now button, you should be able to uh, see what their availability is. Now, I don't know if they're taking orders for right now, like for today, or if they're taking future pre-orders. But as soon as you start to order with them, um, you can click the big button that says click here to set my pickup or delivery time. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then down here it says uh, schedule for another day because they're not open now, but it also has their times and where they're going to be, Tony. So okay. at 10 a.m. I can pick it up uh, right. at the Bristol's, or at 5 p.m. I can pick it up at Village of Flat Fork. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. That is that's really cool. So you have their locations ahead of time. It's in there. If there's a, a pre-order that needs to be taken care of, and then if I'm open now and ready for orders, obviously the order now tab, right, or the order now button will be available. Very cool. Right. So I have a technical question for you. <clears throat> yeah. Obviously, you know that there's other apps out there in the market, um, and, and some trucks are using them, whether it be Street Food Finder or Foodies or your app or, you know. Some, where's the food truck? We where's the them food on. truck? Yeah. Um, so there, there are multiple apps that all have their own caveats. Each one of them does, you know, this, that, and the other. A little niche area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's always been my mindset as a business owner that, you know, I need to use every one of these platforms. I, I should not have every one of these on my phone. It should be right there on my homepage of my phone or my iPad or whatever I'm using on my truck. Um, and I should be able to get those those incoming opportunities because I don't know which one the customer has. I don't know if they have exclusively street food finder on their phone and that's what they're using i don't know if they have you know food truck pub i don't know if they have where's the food. I, I, I don't know which one they have on 
But from a technical standpoint, um, you guys are pulling the data from my POS system to populate your platform. And so it shouldn't matter if I have one or five of these on my phone. It's a one-way street as far as the communication from my POS system to your platform. So if I'm getting an order, say, from Where's the Food Truck app, and I'm getting another order coming in from Street Food Finder, and I'm getting another order coming in from you, and they're coming in at the same time, but they're coming in from different apps, is that going to cause like a technical problem or a, a software issue? Or, it, it, you know, I mean, how is that? How would that work? I, I don't understand that technology. Well, <clears throat> I can't speak to the other one because I don't know a, a ton about uh, how they're architected. Right. But at least with uh, Food Truck Pub, the, the way we work is you link us to either your Square account, your right. Clover account, or a PayPal account. Right. And you do that under settings. You click, you click on the payments tab, and then you link us. Um, it gives you a one-time ask for permissions. Uh, but then once you're linked, you can actually import your menu into Food Truck Pub, so that it, you can maintain your menu completely separate in Food Truck Pub. Uh, I'll just use Square as an example, but you might already have your menu out with Square, and it just saves you from having to re-enter it. So we do let you sync it down to Food Truck Pub, so that'll actually pull your menu from Square from right. your Square POS system into Food Truck Pub, and then you can go in and um, tweak. While this yeah, then you can make modifications to it if, if you need to. And then as orders are placed in Food Truck Pub, those go back out to the cloud, right? It's actually Square that's processing the payment, and it goes in as an order into your Square POS system. Mm -hmm. So all these systems are cloud-based. So I would assume the other ones, if they're architected this way, um, are, are all pulling and pushing out to these different POS systems. I don't know which ones integrate with who. Um, I know some of those ones you mentioned don't even have ordering available. It's just mostly like to find food trucks, right. but there's no way to order from them. That's why we actually integrate with foodies. Foodies um, doesn't have the ordering piece. We have the ordering piece, right. but they do have like a real-time GPS tracker right. functionality available that you can subscribe to with them. So you can find the food trucks too in their system, but then when you place the order, it shoots them over to food truck pub to place the order. Right. Uh, we do the same thing with mobile norm. We've actually have a very deep integration with mobile norm so that when you go active or have a future pre-order in food truck pub, it actually makes you active in the mobile norm system too. So we've actually integrated with some of these guys, uh, pretty deeply. Cool. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, um, what, what I've discovered though is customers do not want to download an app to place one order with a food truck that they can see right over there. But, if you have a link on your Facebook page, uh, you know, with, when you sign up for Food Truck Pub, you get a direct ordering link. So you just copy paste that onto your Facebook page. The, the patron clicks on it, and then they, they you just use their web based browser on their device to place the order. They don't have to download the app. The Food Truck Pub app, um, it's more convenient for truck owners. Um, just because there is that icon when you download an app from the app store. So as a food truck owner, it's nice to have the icon. And then you can also get a push notification right. as orders come in. So just an additional order alert. Other than that, the same stuff is, that's available if you just go to foodtruck.pub in your browser is the same functionality that's available in the app. The only difference is the push notification for truck owners. So I'm signed up on Food Truck Pub. I get a direct link, and then I can post it on my Facebook page. So then the consumer sees that, clicks on that. They don't even have to download the app. That's correct. Yep. That's easy. That's easy. I mean, that's convenient. Yep. You think I? Get, yeah, I don't know if I can get my mom to do it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> but and, and you know what? If close. you go to settings and you click on advertise, you actually get a QR code too. Oh. So let's say you do have some printed materials, like maybe. You Put your menu in the side yeah, of the bar or whatever. Yeah. 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 Put it on your digital or a menu table board. Tent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or a table tent and they can, they can just take a picture of the QR code and they'll be brought. That's just a web link. You know, a QR code is really just a web link. Right. So as soon as they take a picture with their camera phone, they're, it shoots you off to your ordering page or your menu page on food truck pub. And then they can order and check out. So cool. you're, 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 you're developing all of this, um, technology, um, Obviously, there's 
now got to be a bigger picture in your mindset. I mean, merger, buyout, um, what are you thinking down the road? I mean, I think at this point, if I were grown, what is that? 3000% growth period in one year. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like, no, I'm, exit strategy. Yeah, I'm not really thinking about it. <laughs> I'm not really thinking about it yet. Uh, you know, I, I don't know too many, uh, people that would come out and, and offer me anything just based on one year growth, especially for the crazy year we had, because everything is just yeah. so unpredictable. I know if I was an investor, I would probably be a little bit cautious uh, because you don't know if that growth was due to COVID or, or you know, if it's, if it's, you know, just natural growth. Um, and I think we had a little bit of both. Are you guys you know, writing all this stuff yourself or are you just, I mean, is this your, your guys's proprietary code system or. You're talking to the developer. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. I don't know yeah, how to do all this stuff. Is software. All right. My, that, that's my background. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I went to college for that. That's, uh, you know, uh, you know, I've just been a software developer for years. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's in store for 2021 uh, other than just continuing to build out food truck pub, do, uh, integrations where it makes sense with like some of those apps, like we talked about, like foodies or mobile nom, um, just continue to try to, you know, help truck owners, uh, to get more orders um and uh help them market themselves um by using food truck pub so now you can oh, sit so. at the bar and you don't have to sit there and wait for the food truck <laughs> yeah. and it works exactly it right. works for you, I you bet get you that, what you want now I bet you get to enjoy a beer a little bit more <laughs> so i've got a question <laughs> for you wants to wait line when you could be drinking a beer somewhere right? that's right that's right john i got a question uh one of our yeah. uh one of our guys, Mike, has a question. He says, basically, Street Food Finder has where his uh, Google Calendar integrates. Does that um, work on Food Truck Pub as well? It does. Yeah, we have a Google Calendar sync. Cool. Um, in Food Truck Pub, yeah. So you can basically have a dedicated like calendar of your events, and then you can pull them. Uh, ha- you know, set up your Google Calendar sync in Food Truck Pub. It runs every day. Perfect. It looks for your new events in Google, pulls them into Food Truck Pub, and, and that's really just for like marketing purposes awesome. but then you can take you get a direct link then to your calendar page when you sign up for food truck pub too you can also put that on your facebook page to show people and hey, this is where and when i'm going to be very cool um so regardless of whether or not they're going to order through food truck pub they can at least see where you're going to be located that's you awesome. know, your calendar awesome well mike yeah. said thanks uh, that's a perfect answer for him i think he loves it he was he was there on it man yeah, we're, we're yeah. on it man we are on it you guys are on. so. Um, our plan is to um, add you uh, to our allied partners page and to our resources page uh, with a link directly over to you for sign up. Um, I think you and I had talked a little bit about you know doing that, um, and so I think we are going to be more than happy to help you know share, market, and promote uh, foodtruck.pub. Awesome. This Fantastic. Is, this is a you know it's something that I kept seeing out there. I've never downloaded it or used it myself because honestly I hadn't run my, I hadn't run my mobile unit since we started the uh, fabrication stuff almost a year and a half ago. So um, I'm pretty excited to, you know, share this with other food truckers and, you know, be kind of a, uh, uh, an advocate on your behalf because I think this is really cool technology. They should have it on their truck. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you uh, helping to promote us. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a good community of, of people. Everyone's kind of like-minded with the food trucks and uh, they, they know what it's like um, to try to do business, especially right now. So um, definitely uh, it was a pleasure being on the show too. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Uh, so that's John. Uh, Kuhn from uh, food truck dot pub. And again, if you want to, uh, Go out, download the app. I mean, honestly, it's actually pretty it's easy to set awesome. up. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I did it from my phone, uh, waiting for the Super Bowl game to come on, and um, it was relatively easy to set up. Now, I haven't used or implemented a menu of any kind to put up yet or anything to that effect. I got logged in on the back end of this thing. I wanted to check out all the different features. Um, uh, there's, you know, even an event calendar on here. So, um, 
I mean, this, I don't know. There's just a ton of things on here that you guys can utilize, uh, you know, for your food truck. And it's just another way for you to open up the doors to more revenue. So, you know, your success really depends on just doing everything you can possibly do to open up the avenues of revenue that can come to you on your truck. So, if you're not constantly investigating everything that you can potentially do, um, then you know what? You're probably leaving money on the table. You definitely are leaving money on the table. And, you know, if you're, if you're, if your sole purpose is to make money off of your investment, um, of building out a trailer or a truck or a cart or whatever, and you want to see that come to fruition and, and realize that, then, you need to constantly be looking at apps like this, uh, foodies, you know, um, where's the food truck, uh, street food finder. I mean, you know, there are more than just one avenue um, that can generate potential opportunities for you. And we haven't even got into the catering apps yet. So that's going to be a whole different episode. Um, and we will bring on uh, guests from that aspect of um you know, the catering side of the business. So people don't look at food trucks as being caterers, if you will. Uh, they call more or less the traditional caterers that show up, you know, in a couple of vans and they unload all their stuff and they set up the buffet. And well, guess what? You can do that in a food truck too. And you should do it in the food you truck. You should do it in a food truck because it's a whole lot easier than to truck a bunch of, the, you know, food and a couple different vans I and hot it. boxes There's and all that. There's a catering other. place down the street from my house. I drive by it every day. He's got tons of trucks out there and not a single food truck. He's yeah. missing the boat. Oh, I mean, you know, if you're going to get into the food truck business and you want to kind of specifically go after the catering arm of things, there's a different way you can design your truck that essentially gives you a mobile catering kitchen on wheels uh, to where you're simply just setting up tables, putting on your tablecloths, decorating your stuff, and then guess what? All your food is hot, ready to come out of the truck and, you know, right onto the serving line. So anyways, um, that's going to probably um, wrap us up for, I think, our, our technology series, if you want, on yeah. the apps. I mean, we've covered uh, several Lots. of them over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, um, we had a lot of app action. And so I hope that you guys will go back and listen to some of these. Uh, if you have not yet uh, shared us, please do so. Share, Again, share, share. we're trying to get thumbs up, thumbs up to that 100 marker number. I mean, heck, we'll even take a thumbs down on some of the bad shows. <laughs> No, but we, I have yeah. to give a thumbs down to that beer that Gnarly Gnome brought me last week. Oh, that was not a beer. That was don't beer. you insult that beer. Was like a can of spearmint. I'm not even gonna... I don't even drink anymore, but don't insult beer that way. <laughs> it wasn't a beer. It was not a beer. It was a, I don't know, some, I feel like a margarita food, food or something. Drink. God, Lord. <laughs> so anyways, I am on my third... <laughs> Mountain Dew right now, so I'm pretty wired. Um, but again, I want to reiterate what's coming up. Uh, if you missed it in the uh, earlier session of the podcast, the dates uh, for the food truck seminar, uh, March 22nd and 23rd, uh, we will be pushing out details. If you haven't subscribed to our email list, subscribe. Uh, subscribe. subscribe. So you can go on to foodtruckermagazine.com. Subscribe to our email list, Subscribe. and then we will be pushing out all the information on the food truck seminar, March 22nd, 23rd. It is going to be in the morning from 8 to noon, and then uh, April 19th and 20th is going to be the web design seminar. That's going to also be in the morning for four hours each day. So free uh, for you guys to attend. Again, additional information um, that you can rack your brains with, uh, resources that you can use. Get your phone number on grasshopper.com. For sure. Yeah. And uh, if anybody's got any questions, we got a few minutes to take some uh, online. If you want to give us a call, yeah, feel free to call in. Text message five one three four eight zero twenty two ninety. I want to thank uh, you know John and uh, Ken for coming on tonight, explaining to us. I think I'm gonna have, I'm gonna use both of them myself. I mean, yeah. I'm just going to download them all on my phone. <laughs> I plug them all in because when I get ready to go, you know, go live 
uh, I'm going to. I like your question about the, is everything going to mess up? You know, you, you, we well, talk you to think, all these apps yeah. and it's like, it's if, like if, if it was you, you'd have all of them, right? And then you'd have all these orders coming in from all these apps. That's and what I'm, They're I going like, into your POS system and they're traditionally. All coming in, you know, at the same time, you know, yeah. it's like. If, traditionally, if POS systems are really not liking that type of stuff. Um, so it would be really cool to see if all of these things kind of wait in line, so to speak, as they wait for their chance to put the order in next. And if they, you know, obey we should test that work, I think it'd be really cool. We, we should, should get, get a POS system set up here. Any listeners with a POS system you want to let us use for? You want to bring a POS system up here to the studio? We'll got, test. Like, you know it. what? You can pull the one you had on. Yeah, there. I got, I got, it, I, I yeah. got it on here. There I we got, go. I got a square on the iPad right there. Uh, yeah. We well, ought to do that. And yeah, then, we would test it out. Just yeah, see have happens. everybody download a different app on a different phone device and I then think, send in an order. All I, the same I really time. think you're onto this something with this delivery thing. And, you know, I, it's just a shame. I, 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 there's one place, uh, one guy I found, and it looks like he's in somewhere in Nevada or, or California, and he's got maybe 20 trucks or something, 10 tr- trucks under it. Right. But it's, it's there, yeah. and he's doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I would think that you would be able to increase your revenue as a truck, you know, and, and it, it's kind of funny that you're hiring a delivery system when you got a truck with six wheels on it, basically, you know, well, it's like, okay, so I'm completely mobile, but uh, it can't pull into can't, a neighborhood, yeah, you know, I mean, you and turn around in a, in, in a cul-de-sac with a 24 foot barbecue trailer you to know? drop off your sandwich, right? To drop off. <laughs> so that would be impressive though. It yeah. would be, yeah. I think uh, I think delivery drivers for food truck completely makes sense, yeah. uh, and it would minimize their costs for sure. And get them to get their name out there as well. And and the other thing is, again, you could change the impression of this delivered food because I'm telling you, oh, I know. I, I'm not going to order from these other things. No, I can barely go to the restaurants that they serve from. But then, you know, when you get this food that this person's brought to you, it's just. And you see some of the drivers that are bringing it to you. You're like, yeah, I didn't order that. Yeah. Them wearing a mask is the least of my worries. So, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think these apps that we've gone over are very, very helpful. Uh, the, the things that we've touched on just in the last two or three weeks have been um, extremely helpful for food trucks in, in our local area and, and abroad. So if they're not doing these things and they just they don't like money. <laughs> Who doesn't like, I money? like money? I like money. It's, it's a good, good move. Yeah. So I think next week we've got. Um, we got some uh, we got some special guests coming on again for next week that um, we will confirm hopefully during the course of this week. Now I know we haven't been the best at advertising ourselves. We haven't done very much of it at all. No, probably zero. That's uh, okay. I think like one hour before the podcast, I'll post out there on you know who our guests are and what what the content is. But it's not for lack of trying. Every time I tell you to, you're like okay, and then the phone rings. I know one of the phones. I know, but you know, honestly, um, what we've been trying to get to a point where, uh, and Gnarly Gnome's probably listening, uh, where we can execute the podcast, you know, without any technical errors. And so far tonight, our first one, six in, and uh, 13 minutes, <laughs> we got 13 minutes, uh, technically to go and uh, not a glitch yet. So I'm pretty like, I'm, I'm pretty excited woo-hoo! about it. It'd be cool if we had uh, one of our, uh, caller or one of our uh, listeners or watchers call in and uh, just say hey i've been you know i've been trying to talk to people get them to call in and just ask a question or shout out their own food truck or advertise for themselves i mean i know yeah i mean we were couple... supposed to have food tonight which is kind of kind of bummed me out that you know we, we we couldn't get our our guest food truck to come in the studio tonight so this goes out to any food truck in the entire greater cincinnati area calling all food trucks calling all food trucks if you uh, are interested in setting up at the Hamilton Hub, the Hamilton Hub is the new food truck park coming to downtown Hamilton. Um, you can look it up online at hubhamilton.com. And hopefully it is going to open uh, by September 1st. So construction is underway. Dem- demolition is um, you know, nearing completion, I think, on the inside of the bar area. Um, which is the old historic building there at 501 Main. 
Um, but the park itself is open to any food truck that wants to get into a rotation basis there. Um, they will be having multiple sessions uh, throughout the uh, week. So from what I understand, it's going to run Tuesday through Sunday. Um, I think they're going to be closed on Mondays. And um, everything is going to run as far as scheduling and booking wise uh, through the foodies app. Now the dates for um, accepting rotation bases uh, have not been published at this point. And the reason being is that we have secured two um, vendors right now that will be on premise at all times. And the third one we are looking to secure um we have negotiations going on between a couple of different vendors. And, you know, once we can land that third seasonal, uh, that's going to give us the three food types that we don't want to have in food truck rotation. So if we give a seasonal position to, say, a barbecue truck or trailer or whatnot, uh, that vendor's there for basically the entire season uh, at the hub, so it gives them a permanent basis, a home base to, to operate from. Uh, what's cool about it is they've got all the amenities. So, you know, unlike other places where you might park, you're going to have full electric 50 amp service. You're going to nice. have gray water dump on site. Awesome. Uh, you'll have grease dump on site. Perfect. Uh, you'll have fresh water fill on site. So you're essentially getting all the amenities to sit there, park and serve and sell your food. In addition to all the entertainment that gets booked there, in addition to the Spooky Nook facility that's going to be opening up uh, less than less than a mile away from where the hub is going to be at, so they're anticipating you know x amount of uh, hundreds of thousands of people coming in. That's a Spooky September Nook. opening on the Spooky Nook, right? Ish, like a ish. I think it's probably it will be full swing in twenty twenty two. Right. And so you're going to have teams and family coming in from all over the country. Yeah. That spring, uh, spring yeah. thaw is going to be a big deal up there, I'm sure. Yeah. So, I mean, they're building new hotels in downtown Hamilton to accommodate all these incoming, you know, and so the hub's positioned right in the middle of all of it. But I think there's been some misconceptions because of, you know, the Queen City Mobile Food Trucks Association with the hub. Um, they reached out to us uh, way back in July of last year for an initial consult. And uh, from there, we got involved with them because this is what we like to do. We, you know, we want to promote the food scene. We want to promote our fellow food truckers. We want to keep you guys out on the street working as often as we can. And any opportunity that presents itself to do that we're going to take advantage of. And oh, yeah. so uh, we have the skill set to help them. Um, we went through it with the Cove. Uh, we also helped uh, develop and consult on the uh, Covington Yard project. And so we've got some experience in, in setting up these food parks. And so uh, they felt comfortable in going with us, but that doesn't eliminate food trucks that are not a part of our association. So if you are a food truck and you want to get involved with the Hampton Hub project, it is open to all food and trucks. And please apply, yes. So when we start publishing out the dates, those dates will be open to any and all food trucks, not just Queen City Mobile Food Truck Association members. So Everyone I just welcome. want to make that very clear to everybody. Everybody is welcome. All food trucks. Now, we are looking for a very specific type of vendor to round out that third seasonal, which is why it's taken us a little time to lock that in. Um, we do have Mama Bear's Mac and Cheese. They are going to be the year-round seasonal. So uh, we mentioned that on previous podcasts. There's going to be a 28-foot uh, Airstream Zeppelin sitting right there in the yard in which it's going to be retrofitted and converted into a full kitchen. And so uh, we will be um, enjoying their food seasonally all, all year round. And then we have Matt from Rock and Rose. Uh, they're going to set up seasonally as well, but they'll be f spring through summer, uh, three fall. Um, and then they'll have the winter uh, months off. And so we are seeking one more, um, one more seasonal vendor to put on site. And then we'll start putting out all the food truck rotation dates and times. So, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So if uh, we don't have anybody interested in calling the show. Yeah. 
It's all right. We love you too, man. Yeah. So fine, whatever. <laughs> Um, we are still accepting uh, future dates for uh, food trucks that want to come on, bring some food into uh, into the studio here, talk about your concept, your food, uh, what you got coming up um, as far as events and that, this, that, and the other. So if you're interested in coming on the program, feel free to shoot us an email. Let us know uh, what Tuesday you might be able available to come out, and uh, we'd love to have you on, especially the, the, the free food that comes with. Uh, yeah, know, we'd love to have you on. And we'd love to have some free food. Yeah. But exactly. on would be cool. You know, we love food. Call in, come in, whatever you guys want to do. We've got members in the association. We've got members outside the association. We'll, we'll take, yeah, come on in, call in. We don't care. You know, if you're a, an enemy, um, we call in, we'll talk to you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the great thing about this show, Tony, is you're opening it up for people to call, whether they call or not, that's their own thing. But, I think the great thing about this show is we're giving them something to listen to, something that's educational for them each week. Uh, we take them through the process of a lot of things that um, get skipped over. I think yeah. so. It's um, it's really cool. I wish uh, I wish I had this when I first started mine back in 2017. Yeah, it would have gave me a lot of uh, you know a lot of guidelines to do things that I probably shouldn't have done. You know, and spent money I probably shouldn't have spent. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it, that's what we're here to do is is teach people what not to do. So, so it's like I was telling him. He said, uh, "I think I'm going to get a food job." I'm like, "Don't do it! Don't right, do it! Right code, code, right code." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get somebody eventually down the line here who's going to pop up with a food truck delivery app that's just going to blow our minds. And that's why I'm just going to, you know, I could like do a non-disclosure scenario <laughs> and talk about all that hush hush yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. spring on everybody yeah. and say, Hey, guess what we did? Yeah. No, nah. I'm just like, just do it. Just get it done. So get I'm going to tell every, to yeah, I'm just yeah. going to tell everybody. And then somebody out there is going to be like, don't need, you don't really need good one idea. more. No, I don't need another project. Fire. I do not. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I think, I think you're full, bud. I do not. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. 8.55 on a Tuesday night, and uh, yeah, I don't need another project. <laughs> hey, this one's fun, though. This it is good fun. stuff. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We are going to get out of here, and we'll see you all next week. Take care of each other, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks, guys.